Master Agua, what's up, bro? Can you react to the humanitarian crisis going on in Afghanistan? I mean, seriously, Pakistan has ordered 1.7 million immigrants out of the country. The Taliban wouldn't accept them either. All right, so 1.7 million migrants from Afghanistan were living in Pakistan. And Pakistan told them to fucking kick rocks. And the Taliban's like, we don't want any of these sandal-wearing motherfuckers. Is that what's going down? Is that what's going down? All right, well, let's get into it. Let's find out. All right, let's see. Pakistan orders. According to NPR. BBC, New York Times, let's try the Washington Post. Bro, could you get any more ads on your fucking page? Holy shit. All right, interesting story. Shout out to Master Agua for bringing us something. And then apparently new pictures of Bill Clinton with a prostitute to revert back to degeneracy. We'll check that out as well. All right, first, folks, we're going to check out this Washington Post story. Maybe some other articles about it, too, depending on what we find out in the article. But Pakistan carries out a mass expulsion. All right, Pakistan is over it, bro. Global attention centered on Gaza and compounding upheavals and traumas triggered by Israel's war on Hamas, another population is in crisis. We got hundreds of thousands of Afghan refugees being forced to leave Pakistan as the country implements an order from its interim government to remove undocumented people from within its borders. Of the roughly 4 million Afghans living in Pakistan, about 1.7 million people are thought to be in the crosshairs of this re re repatriation plan. I don't know why I couldn't read that word. Uh, Pakistani government set a November 1st deadline. So that was 12 days ago. For when people without legal documents, primarily Afghans, but also potentially asylum seekers from persecuted groups such as the Chinese, uh, China's Uyghurs and Miramar's Rohingya. So those are what? Christians being persecuted in other countries? Or no, the, the Uyghurs are, are Muzzies. I don't know who the Rohingya are. All right, to remain in the country must leave or otherwise face arrest and deportation. A network of holding centers for detained migrants has been set up in the Pakistani provinces. Locals report a surge in police harassment and abuse of Afghans living in the country. Close to 200,000 Afghan refugees have already returned to the homeland. Some do not even know w with... Wait. And some we do not even know with the numbers rising. I guess that's what it says. Um, all right, so Safraz Bhakti, Pakistan's caretaker, interior minister, has framed the decision as one shaped by security imperatives, claiming that 14 out of the 24 major terrorist attacks carried out this year with Pakistan have been from Afghan nationals. 
Pakistan is struggling to rein in the Pakistani Taliban outfits operating within the country. These factions have loose connections to the Taliban government next door in Afghanistan, which has denounced Pakistan's planned expulsion of its nationals. Many of the Afghans who have joined this exodus were born in Pakistan or fled to the country decades ago as children. I was born in Pakistan. I've lived here for 42 years. I went to school in Pakistan. A man identified as Nassim, who traveled to the Torkara border crossing from the northern city Persh Pershawar. I've never even I've never been to Afghanistan. Now their lives are subsumed in uncertainty and fear. More than 50 years of chaos and strife in Afghanistan have sent waves of refugees to neighboring Pakistan and Iran. What do you mean 50 years? I thought America was the problem. We've only been there for 20. The latest flow came after the Taliban's 2021 takeover in Kabul, but many Afghans have resided in Pakistan since the days of the Soviet invasion. Reporters at border crossing detail tragic stories of Afghan families fleeing from police extortion, vigilante violence, and losing their businesses and property. Pakistan's announced a deadline for Afghans to return has led to detentions, beatings, extortions, leaving thousands of Afghans in fear over their future. Said by Farishta Abbasi, Afghan, Afghanistan researcher in Human Rights Watch. The situation in Afghanistan remains dangerous for many who fled, and deportation will expose them to significant security risk, including threats to their lives and well-being. According to the United Nations, 1.3 million Afghans are registered refugees in Pakistan, 880,000 more have legal status to remain, but have a huge population of undocumented Afghans living in the country, and are now being collectively punished for the actions of a handful of militants. Really? All right, so the large majority of such people are vulnerable Afghan refugees and stateless persons for whom Pakistan has been a home for several generations. It is unacceptable to hold them to account for the wrongs of a select few. They have had a moral right to seek refuge in this country and be treated with dignity and empathy. What is this left-leaning fucking philosophy that... Everybody has a right to go and do whatever the fuck they want. Why is there a moral right to seek refugee in another country? Who gave... Why? What are you talking about? This is the same thing with our southern border, dude. Oh, well, their, their home's bad. They got drug dealers over there. Have you been to fucking L.A. and Chicago? We, we got drug dealers. We got gang violence, dude. I don't understand. You're fleeing your gang violence to come join our gang violence? Uh, I don't get it. Western government and international agencies also expressed alarm, warning of new humanitarian crisis in a country like Afghanistan that is already crippled by a collapsed economy and the pariah status of its political leadership. Some returning refugees face persecution at the hands of the Taliban authorities. Others lament the inability to enroll their girls in schools, given the draconian edicts of the extremists in charge in Kabul. Many fear homelessness and... destitution? So I've lived in Pakistan for more than a decade. Well, it seems like you've had long enough to get your shit together then. Why don't you have fucking legal right to be there? Or why haven't you gone home already? A decade's a long time, my guy. A man identified as Mohammed told Al Jazeera at a border crossing, I have three children and a large extended family who are being pushed back af after the government did not fulfill its promise of providing us proper documentation. I have no money, no roof. Where do I go back? Okay, well, that changes things a little bit if you were told that you were going to be getting some paperwork. But who told you that? That's like all the migrants coming across our border talking about, well, Biden told us to come. Yeah, technically he did. That is true. 
but now all American taxpayers have an obligation to fucking take care of you because we got one geriatric fucking retard telling people the border's open? Bro, and my city has been crazy, dude. So I worked a bunch over the weekend. Um, and I, there's just herds of fucking migrants roaming my town, bro. Apparently, Border Patrol did another uh, release or something locally. But I went into a McDonald's and there's like fucking nine, seven foot tall, stinky fucking Africans staring at the menu like they know what the fuck's going on. Trying to get a Big Mac, stinking up the place like a bunch of fucking homeless, dude. And then as you drive around, there's just herd after herd of fucking random migrants cruising around buying shit at all the stores with taxpayer dollars. They're just going around to the stores, buying shit. They didn't bring no fucking money. The cartels took all their money. They came here broke. Government gives them a fucking envelope full of cash. Oh, and the other thing is my wife goes to buy a turkey, right? Thanksgiving is coming up. She likes to buy the turkey a few weeks out to make sure we have it. Yada, yada. Weird, you know, wifey thing. Um, so she goes, she calls me. She's like, there's no fucking turkeys here. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, they got three giant bins. They're all empty. There's like 10 turkeys in, in this third bin. And they're 50 fucking dollars for a turkey. So she does a little research on it. Apparently, all the turkeys are being bought up to be provided to the fucking migrants for their first Thanksgiving in America. What the fuck? The world is so ass backwards and fucking retarded, dude. Alright, back to the article here. Unmoved, Pakistan's caretaker government, guided by the country's domineering military is pressing ahead as it also prepares for election schedule for February 8th. Well, that might be one reason they're trying to clean up immigration before they do an election. They've probably noticed that in America, there's enough illegals to swing votes. They don't want that shit happening in their country. The military, which exerts heavy influence over the caretaker regime, is likely driving the policy. Army chief publicly endorsed the move and attended the meeting finalizing the plan, noted Michael Kolgaman, South Asia director at the Wilson Center, but is letting the caretaker regime, which need not worry about political blowback, take any of the public flack. Kolgaman, writing in a foreign pol in foreign policy, added that Pakistan may be trying to use the situation in its wrangling with Kabul. Islamabad may be using the expulsion policy in part to compel the Taliban, which have condemned the move, to help more on counterterrorism. So they're trying to force the pal the Taliban to help counterterrorism. All right, I'm confused. All right, let's go ask the terrorist if they'll help us with counterterrorism. Okay, that's one option. Young new arrivals to older and established residents who embrace Pakistan as their only home are becoming casualties of a border geopolitical machination? Machinations? What the fuck is that word, dude? Pakistan has a long, a fraught history with the Taliban. The is Islamist extremist organization received direct support and succor from Pakistan's military establishment and various wings of its leadership were allowed sanctuary in Pakistan cities for years. U.S.-backed government in Kabul blamed Pakistan for helping incubate the Taliban and enabling its militancy. The tables have somewhat turned now with Pakistan authorities frustrated with the inability of the Taliban in Kabul to check the infiltration and plots of the Pakistani Taliban. Those include separate attacks over the weekend on a police convoy and at an Air Force base. The attacks have occurred as Pakistan carries out its reparation plan for Afghans, 
which has been met with anger in Kabul, noted a Sunday editorial in Pakistan at Daily Dawn. Our security apparatus will need to remain extra vigilant and flush out not just the militants, but also their facilitators. In a video statement, Taliban Acting Prime Minister Mohammad Hussan Akhund said that if the current military and civilian rulers of Pakistan or specifically the generals have any problems with the Afghan government, they should solve them through negotiations. Come and talk face to face with us. Don't mistreat refugees for that. Mullah Muhammad Yakup, the Taliban regime's defense minister, called on Pakistani officials not to treat Afghan refugees with cruelty and to protect their property and possessions. He issued an ominous warning to Islamabad, as you sow, so shall you reap. All right. So we got Pakistani asking terrorists to help with counterterrorism because they hid the terrorist leaders over the decades in Pakistan. They think they're owed by the terrorist organization. And the terrorist organization is telling Pakistan that you need to treat refugees good, even though they're refugees because our violent takeover of Kabul. All right, this is the weirdest, most confusing fucking article story that I've ever read in my fucking life. I don't know n enough about Pakistani and Taliban history. Um... But if we take a step back from it and we look at it, I don't see why nations have some duty if a neighboring country has an issue, war, whatever, why is it the duty of the neighboring country just to harbor millions of fucking people? Why is that Pakistan's responsibility? I don't... That doesn't make any sense to me. It's not one nation's obligation to take care of other nations' failures. So... I don't know, it's sad. But Afghanis, get the fuck out, bro. Pakistani doesn't want you, bro. Pakistan doesn't want you. They're poor and homeless. Uh, you know, they're poor and struggling by themselves. They don't want a bunch of undocumented foreigners. But you haven't seen nothing yet. Hopefully when Trump gets into office, he uh, initiates the largest undocumented foreigner evacuation of a country ever. Because I would love um, about, I don't know, 20 to 30 million people in my country uh, need to be kicked the fuck out. So can I blame Pakistan for trying to kick out a million and a half? When I want to kick out 20 or 30 million in my country? I don't know. I don't think I can blame them for that. Um, yeah, that's what they're saying the move is for. Because the Afghans are committing terrorist attacks in Pakistan. Every time they catch a terrorist, he's part of these undocumented illegals from Afghan. And then um, the undocumented illegals from Afghan who haven't blown up anything yet are like, but I didn't blow up anything. Okay. What do you want me to do about that, bro? What do you want me to do about that? I just watched a U.S. veteran with uh, no legs and uh, no arm get harassed at a fucking security checkpoint in a fucking airport because Taliban worked with uh, Assad and CIA to hit some buildings in America a couple decades ago. So, 
Who knows? Who knows? But crazy story, bro. Crazy story. I appreciate you bringing that to our attention. And I'll make sure to bring this up when everybody calls uh, America racist for wanting to get rid of their illegals. Um, we'll make sure to bring that up.